Hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for day four of our devotional series, Unqualified. Uh, hopefully you've been enjoying these, and if you missed any of them, you can catch up on YouTube or Facebook, wherever you're watching this now. Uh, if you are on Facebook, make sure you tag a friend you think would appreciate the comment. And uh, if you're here right now, go ahead and leave a comment. In fact, whenever you're watching this, it doesn't have to be live. If you get to watch this video, just leave us a comment. Let us know you were here. I'd love to know who's watching this. And, uh, and just let us know that we're connected as a church, even when we're not physically together. We're still growing together. And so I don't want to take up any time. Let's jump into it. I don't know if you've ever asked this question. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I meant to be? What on earth am I here for? And, and most people, when they really begin to contemplate this idea of uh, why they're here, it, it leads to a simple question. Who am I meant to be? And I don't know if you've ever said that. I definitely have. Maybe it's uh, after a long day when you're exhausted and you're like, what on earth am I here for? Uh, maybe it's when you've been working hard and you're just like, I don't want to be known by my career anymore. Or after something fell apart, after a bad relationship, you, you want to know, what am I supposed to be doing here? Maybe it's you've reached a certain goal, you've accomplished the thing you set out to do, and you're still not feeling fulfilled. And it just leads to this question, what, what am I here for? Who am I? What am I supposed to be doing? And in fact, last year, Americans spent billions of dollars on these self-help books and seminars and ideas to try and answer that question, who am I? And here's the big problem. The reason we keep coming up empty when we ask that question, who am I, is because we're asking the wrong question. So read with me in Matthew chapter 16, starting verse 15. It says this, Jesus is having a conversation with his disciples. Jesus then asked them, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And so in this passage, Jesus is having a conversation about his identity with the people who have been following him. And Simon Peter uh, gets this very important question from Jesus. I know what everybody else says about me. I know what the world says. I know what the religious leaders say. I know what the word on the street is. I know who about the people who are gossiping about me. I don't care what they say. Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And he got the question right. And getting this question right is essential for not only salvation, but starting a new lifelong path of faith. You are saved when you come to know and believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Not just know about him, not just talk about him, not just know what other people believe, but when he becomes your living Savior. But that's only the beginning of your relationship with him because what happened when Simon correctly identified who Jesus was, Jesus actually identified who Simon was. He said, I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church. So from then on, Simon was known as rock or Petros. That's what the word means. No longer was he Simon, son of John, right? That may be how his friends knew him. That, that's how they knew about Peter around the block, right? Isn't that John's kid, the fisherman, always running around, putting his foot in his mouth? Jesus flipped in this moment Peter's whole identity, and he still does this for us. What changed in that moment wasn't who Peter was, but rather his view on who he, uh, who he was and what his purpose was. Jesus doesn't say, I'll build my church on Peter. Jesus is the cornerstone, the only cornerstone. But what Peter confessed is the basis of every one of our new identities. And that's found in Christ. You're not Simon Peter, the fisherman from Galilee. You are Peter who knows the Messiah, the Savior. Now listen, you're still not going to get it right all the time. We know that Peter's going to go on to deny Christ three times in the very near future. But that's not your identity either. Your identity is not Peter the failure. That event, that single action is not who you are. No, Peter is a follower of Jesus. Peter is a beloved son of Peter. That's your identity, Peter. But you only find your identity when you find Jesus' true identity. And it's still true for us. So who do you say Jesus is? It's life's biggest question. Knowing God is, it's paramount to finding out who you are and who he has designed you to be. And you'll never be happy until you find your true identity in him. All of human history is the long story of trying to find something aside from God that will make us happy. And we never will because we're designed to know and be known by our creator. And God wants to give us this revelation of who you are, but it's found in him. It's hidden in him. He wants to show you how valuable you are. He wants to open your eyes to who you can become by following him. 
but you have to stop talking about who you're not and who you're going to be and what you cannot do and start listening to what God says about your life, reading in his word who he says you are. Stop labeling yourself and start letting God do whatever he wants uh, in you, through you, around you, uh, because he's the unshakable cornerstone. When everything else shakes, when everything else falls apart, you are unqualified to be the rock that never moves. But luckily, you know the one who is qualified. His name is Jesus. In fact, this whole new sermon series that we're working on right now is all about that. So make sure you join us Sunday, uh, weather permitting in Long Branch. Make sure you log on because it's going to be a great study in this unshakable rock that never moves. But for today, stop worrying that you aren't big enough, smart enough, powerful enough. You're not the rock. So just repeat the words of Peter as you go to Jesus. You, Jesus, are the Messiah, the living God. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is too big or scary or difficult for you, Jesus. He has never let us down, and he's not going to start with you. So let's go to the rock today in prayer because he's big enough for whatever you're going through. Thank you, Jesus, that you are our rock. Thank you that we are unqualified. But all the things we are unqualified to do, you do every day. So God, in each of our lives, would you heal us? Would you save us? Would you forgive us? Would you guide us? Would you lead us? Would you bless us? Thank you, God, that you don't withhold good things. Thank you, God, that when we feel lost, that we don't even know who we are, we can go to you. And so God, orient us around yourself. Help us to know you more today and help us to not get lost or afraid in trying to figure out who we are meant to be. Help us to come to you and let you tell us who we are. We are beloved sons and daughters of the living God, and you won't withhold good things from us. So bless us, keep us safe, help us have a wonderful day. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me. If this helped, make sure you leave a comment, like, and share. It's really important to help get us in front of other people. Plan to join us Sunday at 1030 in Long Branch, where the as we kick off a brand new series. He's still got the whole world in his hands. Enjoy the rest of your day. God bless you. Thank you.